Welcome back, folks. This is Armin in the uh, studio trying to get back to work. Uh, I want to preface before I get deeply into this uh, video that video 19, I was speaking about how the hand rules the brain in abstract art. Well, I found this unique quote by uh, a uh, spiritualist philosopher, Gurdjieff, and uh, it says, he said, if thought is active, the hand can become just as quick. And I'm glad I found that. I found it a few weeks too late um, after I published uh, video number 19 because he, he kind of confirms what I was trying to say there. And if you look at this video, you'll see also how fast I'm trying to work. This is on a hyperlapse. There's a... Uh, 10 seconds between each shot but nonetheless I'm working quite fast and in that 10 second period I'm not making a lot of decisions other than what's being fed is um, spontaneous from the subconscious and uh, what is coming from just overriding emotion and, and uh, joy and feeling of doing the work and one of the things I realized that uh, w when you're feeding your work from the subconscious, you can kind of step out of the way. You want to be careful not to, to, to have too heavy a hand involved in the work you're creating. And that's what I'm trying to do here. And, I, and that's one of the reasons I constantly rotate the picture. If I'm working on big, big uh, wall size, five by six, six by seven foot uh, pieces, I'll also turn those in every direction. I like to get the orientation from all sides and let it speak to me. But you can see how I'm applying color. That color doesn't have a lot of thought that I'm picking up colors to, to my left and right. Uh, I, the only pre-condition uh, or thought in the colors are I I keep containers where um, I've separated my warm colors, my reds, yellows, oranges, pinks. Those are in certain containers. And then I keep my cool colors, the blues, greens, um, chartreuses, and other kinds of containers. And then I'll pull out my blacks, grays, and they will be in another container. And then I will keep another container for just my whites. So I try not to mix these up. Uh, and it gives me a lot more dexterity when I want to go grab that color that I want. But in terms of thinking of the color, you can see I'm not really going through a deep analysis on, on what color I should pick next. But when you have created artwork for a lifetime your patterns get burned into your brain pretty much like rote, pretty much like a hot wax record album, if you all remember those. And uh, and that's how I'm operating, as you can see here. It's pretty much driven into me. And, and, and that's the joy when you've made art for a long time and you've dedicated a lot of time to your art you can just go on autopilot and that's the fun you actually you're becoming your own entertainer uh, the, the same reason people go to museum to find joy in art you know we go as artists but we don't have to go we can make this at home we can we can get our own enjoyment and peace of mind daily from what we do and uh you can see it's quite exciting to just to be involved in this every day. And that's what I'm trying to encourage with any of my viewers. Um, don't be impeded by anything. Don't let anything stop you. Every day, wake up and have a goal somewhere in that day. You're going to make some art. Even if it's five minutes, ten minutes, you can do it. But if you do five, ten minutes every day, that starts to add up. At the end of the year, you are going to be amassing a lot of experience on, on a surface or on a sculpture. 
and the more experience you amass, it's going to be like second nature, brushing your teeth. You're just going to know what to do. You're going to go to that surface, and you're just going to let it go. You don't need a lot of an analytical thought. A lot of that thought will paralyze you. It paralyzes me. So, and it takes, you know, sometimes it takes hours to get motivated to actually make that first mark, but you have to fight through it. And once you've broken down that wall and barrier, it just flows a lot more freely. So, that being said, I think that um, this exercise shows you also I'm kind of subtle with my hands and in color intonation. I'm putting down tone, values, various colors, but I'm also taking them away. You can see I have a rag and I have a burnishing medium that I reach in that plastic tub that's a RF blending pigment and it has a quick dryer in it. But everything I'm trying to do, it's just my nature. It's a, it's a subtle intonation of color next to other uh, intonations of color. And what just comes naturally to me is I somehow marry and get next to each other hot and cool colors. And they create a unique vibration. They create a unique attraction for the eye. Because, you know, the eye is always seeking to make sense of what it's looking at. So if something's missing or something's out of order, the eye is going to try to repair and put the um, logic together for the brain. And that's why I think um, abstract art has a great seduction over uh, the bigger artist community and uh, viewers on, on, on a whole. So I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, stay tuned for new work that I uh, hope to get up here soon.